Okay, here's our coordinate geometry questions. I'm going to go through question six from start to finish and then have a go at the other questions. Okay, so you're just going to plot some points here. Um, one negative force. The idea is that the grid helps you visualise what's going on with coordinate geometry. Um, but we will use the grid and we'll use some formulas to help us as well. And remember the formulas that you're going to use, it's all on the first page of the handouts that you've got. So there's point A and point B is at negative 8, 6. So negative 8, 6 is here. There's B. Okay. And then we could put in some uh, straight lines. Let's just put this in. And let's just connect this with a straight line. Okay. And the idea is that the straight line just doesn't stop there. It kind of keeps going beyond A and B. And then we've got this continuous line that goes on forever in both directions. And then let's calculate the distance between them. Well, you've got a formula. And the formula talks about X ones and Y ones. So just call one of the points point one and one of the points point two. And then the first point is x1, y1, and the second point is x2, y2. So you can see that x1 is the 1, y1 is the negative 4, x2 is negative 8, and y2 is 6. So that will help using the formulas. So I'll do a mixture of both formulas and common sense. So over here, if I change my pen, and if I put this on here, when I do this visual here, this kind of helps us see that there's a, a right angle triangle involved here. And now the distance between them, this is about Pythagoras theorem. So you've got a right angle triangle. So the distance between them, I'm going to call distance d. So d squared equals, and it's Pythagoras. So we can do this. Well, actually, that's a mistake. That's if we want d. Let me just write down Pythagoras first, and then we'll talk about the square root. So d squared equals, let me call this... A and this B, A squared plus B squared. So that's a picture. Then you just have to work out the distance A and the distance B. And the distance A and B can come from the formula, or it can just come from counting the squares, or it can come from common sense. So basically this distance here is the difference in the X coordinates. And the difference in the X coordinates when you see them is nine. So this is nine squared. And the B value here is the distance between the Y coordinates. The distance between the Y coordinates is 10. So when you work this out, you've got D squared equals 81 plus 100 equals 181. So D equals root 181. I can leave it like that. You can simplify um, as, a, as a third. So you're looking for factors of, of 181. Or you can just crunch it out on your calculator and just give a decimal answer, maybe to two decimal places. I'm just going to leave that for you to, to play with for the last answer. Okay. Calculate the gradient of the line going through AB. Okay. Well, the formula I'll write down. So the gradient equals rise over run equals delta Y over delta X, changing Y over charging X. Or for every one unit along the X, What's the change in the y? That's what it means, okay? And we've got a formula for this. It's the difference in the y values divided by the difference in the x values. And we've already got the difference in the y values from the previous question. That was 10. The difference in the x values is 9. So 10 over 9. Now, in this case, we're not going to change it to a decimal. For the gradient, we love to keep it as a rational number. A, rate, a ratio number, okay? So don't change that into a decimal, keep that as a fraction. All right, so for the next bit, calculate the equation of the line going through AB, and we're gonna label it L1. So this is L1 here. Now you know that the straight line through AB, when we played in class with a lot of the questions, um, the format of the straight line is this, y equals mx plus b, and the m is the gradient, which we know, and we can compare it to our times tables. So the gradient is just how the straight line is changing for every one unit on the x. Um, so you can think of it as, as the shifted times tables that we're doing in class. So let me do this in two ways. So y equals mx plus b. So m is the gradient. And oh, let me go back to the gradient, because as I look at the line ba, it's sloping downwards, isn't it? So it's actually a negative gradient. Now, if I look at this rise and run, 
what thing must I change to make it a negative? Well, the rise is actually a negative, so it's negative 10. Now, if you'd have used the formula and substituted your y2s, y1s, x2s, x1s in here, automatically you'd have got negative 10 over 9 as an answer. If you just use the distances in the triangle and the visual picture from above, you've got to remember to add on the negative if it's downward sloping. So I forgot that, so I made the same mistake as many students, but now I've, I've rectified it. So the equation is y equals negative 10 over 9 x plus b. Okay. Now to find b, b is the y-intercept, as you know, y-intercept. But this is where we will be careful because the y-intercept here, can you see, I'm, I'm not sure if that's a, an exact whole number or not. So when we're reading off from the y-axis, you've got to be very careful. So I'm going to do this in a different way. I'm going to do it with our numbers. Okay. So this rule here, y equals negative 10 over 9x plus b, this rule has to work for every pair of coordinates that's on the line. So it has to work for point A, it has to work for point B, and it has to work for every other point that's on that line. So we're going to take one of those points, so a is at 1 comma negative 4. So this is the x value and this is the y value. Now when I substitute those numbers into the, our little rule here, our equation, the equation has to balance. The left hand side has to balance with the right hand side. So let's substitute them in. So the y value here is negative 4. Uh, here's negative 10. The x value is 1 plus b. So now negative 4 equals negative 10 over 9 plus b. Now we have to work out for b. So let me just zoom in a little bit. This will look a bit smaller maybe. Um, so if I add on 10 over 9 to both sides, b equals negative 4 plus 10 over 9. And with a little bit of work here, I'm going to put this as a mixed fraction. So this is negative 36 plus 10 over 9 and b equals negative 26 over 9. Okay, so that's a little bit of work with fractions, but that's nothing that you guys can't handle. Then I write down the final equation, y equals negative 10 over 9x, and that'll be minus 26 over 9. Now 26 over 9 is approximately 3, it's just less than 3. So when you go back here, it's a good job we didn't just think that was exactly negative 3 because it's just a bit less. So the actual equation is this one. Now this is why we kind of move away from that times tables idea because this, these are the answers to the negative 10 over 9 times table. And you don't, <laughs> you don't really have um, the negative 10 over 9 times table at your disposal easily. So write down the coordinates of the midpoint of AB. And again, you can get it from the visual. You can kind of have a best guess of where it is. But again, maybe it's getting a bit more complicated where decimals and fractions come in. So we're going to use the formula straight away. Okay, so um, x1 plus x2 over 2, the average x-coordinate and the average y-coordinate. Notice the x1 plus x2 here, but then in previously it's x1 minus x2 for these first two points over here. So I need to know the difference. So x1 plus x2. So let's have a little look. x1 is 1 plus x2 is negative 8 over 2, and y1 is negative 4, y2 is 6. Just go ahead and work those out, and then again write the answers as fractions. So midpoint m, that guy is at, let's have a look, negative 4 plus 6 is 2, 2 divided by 2 is 1 for the y, and 1 plus negative 8 is negative 7, negative 7 over 2. Okay, so let's have a little look. So negative 7 over 2, that's negative 3.5 and 1 high. So negative 1, negative 2, negative 3.5 and 1, it looks like it's just there. Okay, so there's M, the midpoint. Alright, so we've put it on there.